Hello and welcome back to Copic in the Craft Room. I have some beautiful stamps by Power Poppy. Um, their Wild Mushroom Set. Marcella did an amazing job on these. I love every single stamp that's in the set. And so I have done a world of stamping. I've stamped them all up in some light pink ink and some kind of light tan or sepia ink. And then I've also gone in with a little bit darker brown on some craft paper that, now I'm not doing all of this today, don't worry, but I thought I'd pick a couple of the mushrooms and do them in my Copic markers. So I've looked up some images and I've got some fun images that I took in Oregon myself and I don't know what kind of mushrooms these are, but I love these and eventually I have sketches that I will color of these, but I just wanted to share. I have kind of a passion for finding the mushrooms myself. I really think it's kind of fun to find them and they come in such unique colors and shapes and sizes. So I have a little collection going on my iPhone too of um, mushrooms. But for this assignment, I am looking up online and I'm using the names because Marcella nicely put all of their names beside each of the stamps. So I discovered one of them is this bright fluorescent kind of yellow and orange and then the other has these beautiful earth tones to it. So I'm, I've am i pulled an image up on just on Google and then I'm testing out some colors on a piece of scratch paper, a lot of earth tones on this guy. So then I've got these images that I can kind of pull up beside me and I'm gonna work from. So I'm on this guy, I'm gonna use a series of E5s and E8s. So this is E5-3 to start on those little caps and then E55 is coming up from the base of those caps and kind of flicking in. And then right across the center, in the center band, is actually E84. It has a very green, earthy tone. And then E87, softening that up with the E84. And then I'm blending that in just slightly into the top, so that E53. The stems or the base of the mushrooms is going to be with an E70. Now the E7s have kind of a purplish or mauve tone to them. Um, now because I've used the lighter ink too, you're going to see some of these lines disappear as I work. This is E71 and I'm just putting some of that texture back in and I'm working with the lines that Marcella actually added on the mushrooms. So I'm using the lines that she's given me, adding a few more of my own to add that texture back into those bases. And then I've got my E77, which is a really dark um, E7. And I'm going in and I'm actually covering right over the lines on those, on the underside of that mushroom, kind of those, um, I know she told us the name of those in several of her little notes, but the underside, all those little fins, so then I'm coming in with E70, softening that up a bit, kind of running down along the side of each of those. And then working on the top of this tall guy. So this is that E53 again. And I'm working across the top with that. Now when it flares up like this, we still will have that ring effect. You just won't see it all from the side view. So here's that E53 kind of in the center and a little bit out on some of those edges. But then we also see a little ring of the E84. And then we have these almost like spines or like stripes across with E87. And that's, I can kind of see those in the photograph. And so that's what I really wanted to do, but they're pretty sharp. So I came all the way back with an even lighter color, an E51 and softened those. I just brushed across the top real lightly two or three times. E70 is going underneath that mushroom a little bit more and E71 to sharpen up that edge. I felt like it wasn't crisp enough and there's this almost distinct light, light line around that outer edge. And so I went in with that E71 right along the edge of those little ribs and kind of created that white, almost white line. And then I'm using that E71 again to darken up some of the texture and pattern on the under, on the um, kind of stems or bases of those mushrooms. And I apologize, I did fall off the camera and that is completely my fault. So now we're going in on the leaves and you can see I've based some of them with an E50. 
And then I've got an E23 that I'm coming in. I'm leaving the veins of the leaves that lighter color. E21 to soften that back in. You might end up hearing a little bit of rain in the background. We've got a thunderstorm rolling through Iowa as I record this. E50 is all the way out on those outer edges and into those veins to really lighten that up. Now I'm working with a series of E1s. So I've got E11 and E13 to base these little pieces of stick. And then I've got, I know an E15 and an E18 are my two darker colors. There's that E13 again, E15 and E18. And these I think are just like little pieces of bark or sticks that have fallen on the ground. But that kind of finishes that one up. I'm using a little bit of BV20 and Colorless Blender to give a background. I didn't want a real vivid bright blue, but I definitely wanted to come in and give a background. So I'm using that BV20, which if you remember on this color, the BV2 series, in particular that 20, when I come back over it with a Colorless Blender, it pushes the violet back, but not as much of the blue. So you end up with this almost kind of light blue halo effect, which for something like this actually looks really pretty. So it has kind of that violet and then blue effect. E84 is going in on the ground and then an E81, again, very mossy, earthy green. I'm pushing that E4, E84 back in so you can see the name of that mushroom. So here's a photo that I was using for reference. And here's my mushrooms. So you can kind of see side by side what those end up looking like, kind of the look I was going for and hoping to achieve. And I think I did okay. I think they looked they look pretty good. Obviously the, the stamp image itself is a huge part of this. So then I originally thought I'd do something totally fanciful like Unreal. And so I pulled some of my fluorescent markers out. And then when I looked up this mushroom and realized actually in real life, it is fairly fluorescent. I didn't have to make this up. This is really the colors that I felt like I was seeing in that image that I found online. So I've got a couple fluorescents and I'm gonna do kind of some oranges and yellows on the mushroom itself and then some fluorescent greens in the ground around it. To start, however, I've got a Y02, so a very light yellow. Notice I'm leaving some white open. Um, I don't need to fill in everything all the time. And so this is some of that really light yellow. And then I'm coming in with an FY1. So it stands for fluorescent yellow one. And remember the numbering system on these fluorescents is different. So that part we have to kind of remember that it doesn't work quite the same. So coming in in the centers, down right underneath the tops and working its way down. And then this FYR1, F yellow red one, is coming down in the texture of the fins of the underside of that mushroom. And then it's hitting those darkest areas on the top of the mushroom. Some of those dips, it'll do the same thing on all four of these little guys. So I really am going right over the lines that Marcella created on the underside of those mushrooms on the bases. FY1 to blend that F, the other, the F yellow red in a little bit and soften that up and a little bit more. Look how much darker that pops right up under the tops. And I love how that looks. And then I'm using a general white charcoal pencil to brighten up. And I'm really just trying to highlight those edges in the photograph. They almost look white. They almost kind of glow. And so I just wanted to come back in and brighten those up even further. This was a pen that someone recommended to me, or a pencil, sorry. Now I don't want to go over those areas with my pen though. So make sure if you do the white, you're pretty much done if you're using a charcoal pencil like that. So then I've got another little group of fluorescents and some regulars. I started with an FYG1. Then now I've got a regular YG1, or sorry, YG01 and a YG03 that I'm coming in with on the groundwork. So I based it in that fluorescent, and now I'm coming back with a darker fluorescent. So this is F. 
YG2. It's one of the few groups that actually has two fluorescents and it's quite a bit darker. It doesn't look as much fluorescent, but it gives you a sense of that. And then I'm doing the sky in very similar effects. So again, it's that blue violet BV20. And I notice I do it in sections so I can keep up with it because the wetter that ink is, the better to, for trying to fade this. This is not necessarily an easy color to fade to white. I just like the effect and so it's worth it to me to work it a little bit harder and get that kind of neat effect of it fading into blue and then a little bit off to white. It's not a smooth transition, but I really like the effect personally. So coming all the way around and obviously this is at super hyper drive speed at this point. So, but that's going to give you a sense. And then I'm going to fill in the bottom with a little more of that yellow green. So I've got the FYG1, the FG03, and YG03, sorry, FYG2, and the YG03. Sorry about that. So this will give you a sense of here's that photo. That's what I was going for, and I'm pretty pleased with the effects. I could have done a little more with the um, yellow reds, but I'm pretty excited about how it turned out. Thank you so much, Power Poppy, for these amazing stamps. They are gorgeous, and I know I will be using them a lot. Make sure to stop by scrapweaver.com when you have a chance, and thank you. Have a happy, colorful week.